Tell us a little bit about the um, Benjamin's escape as the South loses the war and now everybody's scrambling to save their necks. They don't know how they're going to be treated by the North. And now he yeah. decides, I'm not going to face whatever I, whatever everyone else is going to face. So I'm going to get out of this country and start over. So, you know, when I think about the virtues that this man had, because I would not have written a book if I thought he was simply a portrait in evil. And I, I distinguish between a person's beliefs and a person's character. He's a person who had evil beliefs. Uh, it doesn't mean that his character was more evil than that of a person who has noble beliefs. And so among the things that I admire about him the most are his just dauntless resourcefulness. And I say in the book that this last episode of his, or this second to last episode of his life that you've referred to, he's like Ulysses. He's this master of landways and seaways. He's the shape-shifting figure. So what happens is when um, uh, Grant's army has basically broken through Lee's lines in April 2nd, 1865, uh, the Confederate cabinet flees. They, they put all the gold uh, on, on one train car and themselves on another, and they flee to Danville in Southern Virginia. And then they have to keep fleeing further and further south as the Union forces are advancing. And people are peeling off, generals, cabinet officials, they're peeling off. And the numbers get smaller and smaller. And, and Judah Benjamin says to Jefferson Davis, I will never leave you. And Jefferson Davis makes crazy speeches uh, saying, you know, we've got to fight to the last man. And everyone says, the guy's nuts. Judah Benjamin alone supports him because he understands this relationship that Jefferson Davis needs his loyalty. And so they go further and further south until they're in Northern Georgia, at which point out of, kind of out of nowhere, Judah Benjamin says to Jefferson Davis, I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'm going to go to the Caribbean and I'm going to collect resources. And then you and I will meet because Jefferson Davis thought he could go to Texas and, and recreate the Confederacy. He was really crazed. Now, he had no intention of doing that, but that's the story he told Jefferson Davis. Here's what he does. He is there with another um, New Orleans Jewish lawyer Confederate. And those two create a pose. Judah Benjamin pretends to be a French uh, businessman who was looking for investments uh, in, in the neighbor in the area, but shattered, you know, post-Civil War South. And, and this other gentleman is his translator. And so they, they go southwards for days, sleeping on the ground, eating whatever they can find, in increasingly difficult life. Judah Benjamin never complains still whistling his happy tune, finally says to his Confederate, you know what, it's getting too dangerous for you here. You go home to New Orleans. I'm going to set off on my own. And so he walks and um, he, um, he, he buys a farmer's outfit of rough clothing so that he can pass for a, uh, an ordinary person. He squashes a hat down on his head. He finally makes his way to the northern gulf where he finds... Uh, two guys with a boat, and he has a lot of gold that he's sewn into his clothes that he took with him because he was someone who always thinks ahead. He pays them something like $600 to take him down the Gulf all the way. He has this notion that if he can get maybe to Bimini, he'll be able to get a ship to England. That's what he was always thinking about the whole time. And so they have this incredible voyage where at one point they get stopped by union, a Union gunboat, and they say to him, Go down in the kitchen, pretend, you know, put grease on yourself, pretend you're the cook. And so he comes back up to the, the deck of the ship, you know, and, and, and you know, the, he pretends to be a cook and, and he hears the officer say to one of his uh, colleagues, I've never seen a Jewish guy with such a lousy job before. Wipes himself off. If they, they encounter water spouts. They're almost destroyed at sea. They finally put in. He finally gets in a ship, but the ship is full of dried sponges and the hold leaks and the sponges get wet and it explodes the, the hold and the, the boat sinks and he winds up in a raft with two slaves. And again, it turns out, he says later in a letter, you know, I was, I never, I never had any sense of indisposition. He's, he's exposed to the sun with virtually nothing to eat, 
for hours, they're finally picked up. They, this goes on and on and on. And he never loses his sang froid. It's, it's unbelievable. And finally, he succeeds in getting to a boat that goes to Portsmouth and then he goes to England. And it's, it's an absolutely amazing story and it just shows him at, at his resourceful best.